Welcome back traders. I hope you're following along and playing around with your MetaTrader. Let's carry on, shall we? Alrighty. The next set of buttons we have in this category here. By default, we have the cursor that's loaded and the cursor can be used in multiple ways. Firstly, it can just be used to point and draw your eye to certain parts of the screen. The other thing that it can use is you can click on it and you can drag left yeah, I need to turn off the auto scroll just so we can actually look. You can click and drag to the left to start loading up historical data. And if I drag to the right, it's going to bring us back to present time. If you move the mouse over to the very far right hand side of the screen, you'll see the icon has changed. You can click and squash it like that by dragging it down. Or you can click and drag it up to expand it back up to the full height. If you move the mouse to the bottom of the screen, you can change the horizontal scale. And some of you have, may have noticed that this is the same as zoom level. Those are the key features of the cursor. The next button is the crosshair. And I love the crosshair. The crosshair helps us so much. Ah, let me just put candlesticks back on. The crosshair gives us some information immediately. You'll see as soon as you've selected it and you put it over the chart, it's showing us the timestamp through the vertical line and the horizontal line is showing us the price at a particular level. So for example, if you wanted to look at this peak, you could put the crosshair on it and you can see when that happened and how high that price was. But now to make it more interesting, you can also select any place on the screen. You can click and drag. And now you'll see that we have three additional numbers that are popping up. In this case, we have a 12, a 495, and 1.19893. The first number is the amount of candlesticks that have passed. So you'll see as I drag it left, it'll shrink. And if I drag it right, it increases. So this is telling us how much time has happened from our begin to our end. The middle number is the amount of points that has moved. Now remember there are 10 points to a pip, also discussed in the introduction to the course. So you'll see as I start moving closer to the origin, it starts getting smaller. And as it moves away, it starts getting bigger. And the third number is the price level that the crosshair is now at. Now how this is really useful is let's say you were looking into history and you wanted to see, well, how big was this run? Because you now need to predict a current trade that's happening and you need to see what the average movement size is and what to expect. You can load up the crosshair. You can select the beginning of the run to the end. And now we have a lot of information. We know when it started, at what price it started, how long it took, how many pips profit it took, and what price it ended just by using this. And you can obviously use it for much smaller sections as well. From here to here, I can see this little run took nine candles and we are looking at a one hour chart. So that's nine hours. It moved nearly 1,200 points or 120 pips. And I can see the opening and close price as well as when it began. These next buttons here, are all objects that you can place on top of your MetaTrader. If you see something that you don't have, like I don't think the rectangle is there by default, you can right click anywhere on these and you can go to customize. And then you'll see these are all the different things that are available that can be added to the toolbar. Um, as an example, you will find rectangle here, but mine's already moved across, but you can select it and then you can click insert and you'll see that it gets moved across and it'll appear up here. Now I never use the triangle, so I'm going to remove that, but I suggest you find rectangle and insert it as it is something that we will be using. You can just click close. All right, let's start at the first object. The first object is a vertical line. Now all of these objects, well, most of these objects you have two ways of placing. You can click on it and now you'll see that our icon has changed and you can either just click once on the chart and it'll draw in the vertical line. Alternatively, you can click and drag it until you find the right place. And then when you let go of the mouse, now it's locked into place. 
The vertical line is basically just a timestamp. So if something important happened and you want to see where it was, you can go and you can mark it off there. And we can see, all right, that's the timestamp. So when you're looking into history, you've got everything available like that. The next one is a horizontal line, which is very much the same. You can select it and just click on the chart, or you can click and drag it. And this is especially useful when you're looking at particular price levels. So for example, this turn that happened here, you might want to mark that off and you just let go. And now we have the price marked off and we have a line drawn across the chart, which we can then use for later charting. You will notice that you cannot move this line. If you move the mouse over it and you try and click and drag it, you're just going to move into history and future like that. What you need to do to move an object is put the mouse over it and double click. Then you'll see you get a small box on the top as well as the bottom. The same thing applies for the horizontal. If you double click it, you get a box there and a box there. This means that the line is now movable. So you can go ahead and move it to wherever you want and then double click it again and it locks it into place. This is especially useful if you're going back into history because sometimes you click on a line and accidentally move it out of place and then you don't know where you drew it from or why it was there and it's very difficult to put it back where it belongs. So I really recommend you keep them locked except for when you're actually busy moving them. The next line here is the diagonal line or trend line. This we use especially when we are trying to draw when we're trying to see how a trend has been moving. This one you have to click and drag. So you click at the starting point and you'll see as you drag it, you're changing the angle of the line itself. So you might want to say follow this down. Oh, that would have been wonderful to trade. And when I let go, it's now locked into place. And the same thing applies for moving. You would need to double click on it, except this time we have three boxes. The first box is your starting point. The last box will let you adjust the angle and the middle box will let you move the whole line. So if you have the right angle and you just want to move the whole line, that's how you do it. And once you're happy with the line drawn in, you double click and now it's locked into place. The equidistance and Fibonacci will not be used in the scope of the initial course. We do have a whole Fibonacci section planned, which we will be adding later. So let's move on over to text and labels. I'm going to put one of each down and I'll show you the difference. Basically, you click on draw text and you select where you want it. And you can type in whatever text you would like and set the color and all these things. Now, I must make sure mine isn't black because you won't see it. So I'll make it yellow. And here is the label. I'll also make that yellow and now you'll see that they look identical but have a look at this when I drag around you'll see that the text moves with the chart and label stays where it is now this is useful for let's say there's a news event that came out the NFP happened or something like that and you've marked in your vertical line and your horizontal line so you've you've got a crosshair permanent crosshair of where something happened you can make a text label and you can put it there so you know exactly what that was and it'll stay with the crosshair. If you want to leave yourself a note, especially if you're learning a new trading system and you've got a few rules that you have to remember, then you might want to set a label. And again, to move these, you need to double click. Then you can move it where you want and put it down. So as an example, if you're trading a crossover system and you need to make sure that certain things happen, like uh, the red must cross the blue or something, you can make a brief note and leave it as a label on the side and it'll always be there just to remind you. Then we have the rectangle. Uh, this is something that we added a bit earlier and this is quite simply just like highlighting a section of the chart. The next section here, we have arrows, which is more than just arrows. We have little symbols that you can add. Uh, these might be quite useful. You know, if you had a successful trade, you might want to put a thumbs up. And again, these move like all other objects. They're stuck into place until you double click and actually move it to where you need it. 
and we have arrows up and down which you can use for various different things but these two are the important ones left and right price label now what these do is you select it and like other objects you can click and drag it and then when you let go it's locked into place and you'll see all it is is giving us a price with a little tick the right label is the same thing just on the other side it means that the label is on the right for the right price label and the label is on the left for the left price label now where this is useful is let's say you have this trend line coming down and you want to make a note of that price you could select the label and you can pop it in there and it will show us what that price level was at the point especially when you need to set uh, take profits and stop losses like let's look at current time imagine you were entering a sell for whatever terrible reason it would be for a sell there and you wanted to have your stop loss up there you could just put in the price label and then when you're loading up a new order window you can just type down the number that you have there instead of trying to guess what it is on the side you've got an exact level recorded on the chart same thing can apply for your take profit if you're setting take profit down here and you're in your new order window it's a lot easier to copy it off there that's it for objects the next section here we have are the different periods that you can be trading in it is the same as what we had here as you select the different ones it will change the time frame if you load up one that you haven't had before you'll briefly have that waiting for update window until it downloads the historical data and then puts you in in the upcoming video we're going to be going through how to set up templates I really recommend you watch it because as you can see this black and green and whatnot really doesn't uh, look very good on the eyes so this is the template that we will be doing we keep it nice and clean and clear and easy to see I know it's just a visual thing it shouldn't really affect your trading but we find that if something is easier to look at for a long period of time you can make the right decisions instead of squinting the whole time and if you have enrolled in the course you will also be learning how to set up this template here which is a very popular crossover system I've been using for a long time so make sure you've enrolled in that course. If you haven't already, it's at jpmarkets.co.za.